Welcome to Christchurch Airport, where I'm about to fulfill a childhood dream of going for a ride in a fire truck that runs on batteries. Yes, welcome to Christchurch. This is Tim, Operations Manager. Please tell me something about the truck. We can't talk price, it's commercially sensitive, but we can talk specs. How big's the battery for a start? Yeah, there's two batteries in here. Each of them's around 50 kilowatts usable. What's the motor output of the, we've got a front motor and a rear motor, is that right? That is correct. Um, so there's two motors in here, two high voltage DC motors operating at about 600 volts. Uh, each of those motors has a two-speed gearbox on it, plus a differential, and they can put out a peak power of 180 kilowatts each, uh, but uh, continuous 130 kilowatts. This is a heavy vehicle. What's the weight of this thing? Uh, 18,000 kilos or 18 tonne. Why an electric fire appliance? I and mean, we've got a collection of vehicles here that run on diesel. Why make this one electric? Uh, look, we've got an eye to the future. Um, this whole concept was brought about by Rosenbauer for their anniversary around 2014. And the whole purpose of an electric fire truck is not purely about what it brings to the environment, but what it brings to the operating platform for firefighters. Think of it like an old brick yeah. cell phone. Um, I had the, one of those. Yeah, <laughs> and the, the technology in old brick cell phone was pretty limited, yeah. and they're extremely large. Large old fire trucks, sure, they've got to be a certain size to carry out a, a certain capacity, but the whole point of a fire truck like this and electrifying that platform is that you can do it without massive internal combustion engine, without a chassis, and you can put that technology into a small footprint like a modern cell phone. Let's run through some of the gadgetry you've sure. got on board here. If we go and step inside, I'll let you do there the honours. Look at this. First thing that Hop I notice is, <laughs> look at this, it's almost wheelchair access. It's, it's really low. And this whole thing, the entire vessel or vehicle, it lowers right down to the ground, or conversely, it can go right on up to, uh, to wade streams and, and go yeah. through floods and stuff. Fording depths. Far out, this is a cavernous space. You were telling me earlier, this is one of the benefits of having this central open space. It is like a, a conference room in here. Yeah, it is. And look, it's a, it's a space now that you can come into here as a firefighting team and meet, organise your plans, concepts, go through, uh, I don't know, maybe some, uh, you know, some situational awareness of things that's going on, but it's a safe place to come. The vehicle's running right now. It's quiet. The noisiest thing in this vehicle is the air conditioning. We're in an electric fire truck that is running right now. It's madness. And uh, not only is it running, if I put it into drive, it'll go from not to 80 kilometers an hour in 25 seconds. Is that good? It's really good. So our current vehicles will do that same distance in about 35 to 40 seconds. So what advantages does this electric vehicle have over the big behemoths there in terms of storage? Well, the key thing you can see is okay, so there's no chassis. Easy. No, because climbing up, I climbed up into one of those and went for a blast earlier. It's a bit of a faff yeah. to get in the back seat. It also gives you a huge amount of locker space. And uh, one thing you have in fire trucks is not enough locker space right. and although you know we haven't quite finished the fit out this vehicle is due to go live in two to three weeks um, and some of our equipment that's currently on our other vehicle will come in here um, so in the meantime uh, you're not seeing a completed locker okay. but uh, what you can see is an abundance of locker space while i know a lot of your viewers will be new to fire trucks what i can tell you is that's an unusual amount of locker okay. space on that footprint. Probably two to three times the amount of locker space that you would normally expect to find in a fire truck. What is in all this stuff? What have you got here? Uh, so what will be in here will be cribbing blocks, equipment we can use at hazmat calls, uh, car smashes, medical incidents. It's a Swiss Army knife for firefighting a vehicle like this. This is the first real airport fire RT. So what sort of differentiates an airport fire truck from a regular domestic fire truck? Basically a foam system, okay. a dry powder system, and on the front of this, a spray bar, if you like, or oh, yeah? an output where it can protect the underside of the truck using okay. foam. Okay, no, I saw we, that in use of the, the diesel one. We call them under trucks. Under trucks, yeah, because yeah. it flooded the entire, I didn't yeah. expect that. It's the first RT in the world to have an under truck on it. That's what makes it different. This is our firefighting pump panel right here. And that's it. Push of a button. Okay, I hear things, what's happening? So the, the pump's priming itself automatically. Another high voltage motor's started up at the top there. You can hear it now. Um, we've also got some pump discharge pressure and uh, this pump's ready for firefighting. With as much noise as my washing machine makes yeah. in the garage at home, 
Right now, that fire pump is capable of fighting a house fire or an aircraft fire. It's insane. I need to point out that there is a diesel backup generator. There is. For emergencies, because you typically have a runtime, you say, about two hours? About two hours, pure EV. Okay. And when the two hours is up, or we're down to 20%, whichever comes first, that diesel motor will fire up. What was a high voltage motor driving a pump, now becomes a gen set. So our diesel engine is driving our pump and our high voltage DC motor is now a generator and it's generating enough electricity for firefighting and for driving this vehicle for another eight hours. So a total time of 10 hours. Now immediately there'll be people on YouTube comments and you, you know who you are saying, oh, it's got a diesel engine on it. Oh, so it's not clean after all, but that engine's probably gonna be very rarely used. I would say that 95% of the call outs that we do here at Christchurch Airport will be less than 20 minutes. We're expecting this vehicle to be around the 97% pure EV. I mean, don't let perfect be the enemy of No, and good. look, ultimately we do have to consider the fact that we could end up in an aircraft crash for an extended period of time. This vehicle has a backup supply of energy itself. And rather than hybrid, uh, it's a range extending EV. Basically it's a BMW i3 with a tank of water. Okay, so this apparently has got a BMW diesel engine in it. Again, unlikely to be used in most situations, but this is what it sounds like. So it started up, Gav. That's pretty quiet. Yeah, and you'll, you'll already hear there is a slight hum in the background. Yeah, yeah. But we're not running a 9 litre engine, we're running a small 225 kilowatt high performance intercooled turbocharged diesel engine. When you go to a fire, what do you need? You need to get the water to the fire. Right. So we need some fire hoses. Firefighters use big breathing apparatus. Yep. They also use fire hoses. So we've got high rise kits, we've got hose on coil, we've got flake hose. The other thing too, important to remember with a truck like this, because you've got no big chassis, where do you output? How do you get that water? Oh yeah, that's a good out. point. Actually, how do you get the water out? Oh, are you serious? Straight up. So now everything's down, plug it in, away to the fire we go. There's some stuff in here that's not in a normal fire truck. In this particular case is a hygiene wall. Oh, look at that. Come over, wash your hands, bud. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Oh, look at that. Just like grandma used to make. So you've been to a fire <laughs> call and uh, you want to dust yourself off. I can dry off my hands up. Because yeah. you're covered in crap. Right, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, you, you like that? Oh yeah, very refreshing. Yeah. Anyway, you can dust yourself <laughs> off, get rid of all those horrible nasties. Right. Uh, jokes aside, um, you know, there's some extremely nasty stuff that firefighters deal with. Oh yeah, I can imagine. So what something as simple as a hygiene wall um, gives you is somewhere to clean up mm -hmm. without taking all those horrible nasties back into our workspace. Oh, this is like deal or no deal, but with emergency services. Yeah. What's behind the next cab? <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is some serious kit. So, oh, what is this? So this is a dry powder system. There's several classes of fire, A, B, C, D, E and F. Right. This particular dry chemical is for aircraft rescue and firefighting. Okay, good. And that's part of the uniqueness that makes us an airport firefighting truck. What's this? Well, if you go to a car smash, plane crash, that kind of thing, sometimes people get stuck. And this equipment allows us to get people unstuck. Okay. This is like the, the jaws of life. Do you still call it that? It's what it's commonly known as the jaws of life. Oh, right. it's, it's, but I mean, the first question I want to ask is this, is this as strong as a hydraulic unit though? Absolutely it is, stronger. Oh, and it's battery powered? Absolutely, 100% battery powered. I don't, look, <laughs> five foot six. No, I can't put that on. <laughs> you don't want to join me? I have to ask first, what's this? Is this like a charge indicator, a tank indicator, or is it just a pretty light? Well, uh, the top one's water. We've already used a little bit oh, of water today. Okay. So that's, that's the water level. Okay. And the next one's foam. Now you might think, actually a firefighter needs to know that. That's for our officers. Oh, so okay. if you're an OIC and I walk past this fire truck and I, instead of going to someone here and saying, how much water have you got in your tank? How much foam have you got le left? Quick glance and it's that immediate information that our officers need at a fire call. What is this thing? It looks like a little fax machine strapped to the front? It's a monitor um, or a turret as they're known in certain parts of the world. It's an output of water um, that we can output foam and water at an aircraft crash or another fire and we can throw some water out at about 65 metres on this truck. So what's the sort of typical response time you would expect to have to get to an aircraft if there was a fire? So we're looking at a total response time of all our vehicles in under three minutes. So does this, um, is this any better or worse than the existing fleet? Definitely better. So we're looking at 33% better with this truck oh, in response time alone. With the push of a button, we're going to turn this vehicle into a four-wheel steer. Uh, in this particular mode, it's got a better, better turning circle than a Ford Ranger. No way! 
So certainly the, the electrification of the platform um, with the steering is huge. You, you think about doing a U-turn in a tight street for a domestic fire truck, they're facing the wrong way or they get a call out that's in the other direction. Normally it's a three point turn. Right. Press of a switch and uh, hey presto you're out of there in uh, the, the turning circle that's um, no way a fire truck can normally do. When I came here I expected that this was going to be showing off the green credentials and that's what sets it apart but it's actually very functional. It's got, it can do a lot that traditional fire trucks can't. That I didn't expect. It's got a lot of promise, it's got a lot of toys. Yep. Can we simulate an emergency and go for a blast? Sure. Alright, strap yourselves in, we're going fire hunting. That was crap! <laughs> <laughs> we're going fire hunting? <laughs> What are the guys doing now? Uh, they're about to run a hand line. So entering a building, a plane, an aircraft, we're always going to send a, a crew in. Simone's coming around, she's doing the pump operating. Basically now going to deliver water to that hand line. Okay. Oh, far up. How, how hard is it? Like one person can handle it okay or you need two people? Um, essentially you need two people because that person who's on the hand line at the front, they can't move around or do anything without somebody assisting. So what you've got here basically now is a full firefighting platform if that was your house or your plane or anything, the only thing missing is an OIC, and that's me. I can see the uh, the water tank on the side, the meter yeah. is changing as the tank reduces. How, how long can that run at full kill? It depends on what, you, what you're using. If you're using the monitor on the front or the turret on the front, you're looking at under two minutes, a minute okay. and a half. But if you're using a hand line, um, potentially five to ten minutes. So that's it, it's that easy. That, I mean the rollout was fast. Essentially full on firefighting and normally um, noisy as all hell. Putting on a display for the, uh, the passengers in that A380 that's just pulled up. <laughs> Probably wondering what's going on. <laughs> all right, that's the guts of putting out a fire as you can see. Perfectly capable fire appliance right there. Question in my mind now is that how do you fill it up and how do you recharge it? Well, we're gonna do it right now. Okay, so the plane's coming, so it's going to get a bit noisy, but basically it's just connecting the hose and turning the tap on. Normally. Normally. <laughs> but in a, in a normal fire truck, it would overflow. This one doesn't. This one has auto functions on it that help our firefighters actually fill the tank without it even fl overflowing. If we started using water, it will auto fill. So our firefighters don't need to worry as much about, the, uh, there's still a need to worry about tank contents and how much uh, agent you've got but ultimately the truck's gonna look after itself. It's a little bit like a battery. You fill it to a certain point, and when it thinks it's got enough, it's gonna turn off. And you'll see they're filling away, and what percentage are we up to? 56, 57, yeah. 58. Gosh, it's, it's rapid charging. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've filled the tank up. Yep. What about the other part, the electric batteries? How do we fill those up? Let's get in the shed and find out. Well, you can do it two ways. Yeah. While we can DC charge it, we can also AC charge this and we're going to AC charge and recapture a normal fire response of around 20 minutes. We're going to recapture that in about two hours. I can see there's a charger up there on the roof and then in your hand that is the 22 kilowatt AC Type 2 charger. It is. And where does it go? Just like any EV, charging board. Nice and simple. And once it goes green, it's charging. And there you have it, that is the guts of New Zealand's and the Southern Hemisphere's first electric fire truck. But I suspect it won't be the last. No, no, look, Christchurch Airport's already got a, a second EV fire truck on order. What you see behind us, as we've said, is an 18 ton vehicle. But at the end of 26, uh, we're having one of the world's first Panther EVs arrive here. And that will be a 40 ton pure EV vehicle with the same technology in the background that this vehicle has. So I guess I'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right.